Hi guys, <laughs> we're back with another <laughs> addition to our uh, mini sewed series. Uh, you know the drill. We'll be talking a little bit about our lives and all that fun stuff. Previous episodes, so you know, get the china out, get ready for that tea. <laughs> Please remember, if you love this episode, to leave a review and share the episode with a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) in this corner, Eddie Gagnon! And in the opposite corner, Kristen Gagnon! This is What's Special About Special. Uh, I wanted to say that. Well, hello there. My name's Eddie Gagnon. (laughs) Eddie, I don't want to be here all night. Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name's Eddie Gagnon. (laughs) That was perfect. (laughs) Kristen. Your voice. Eddie, I'm not right, doing folks. this. No, all right, I'm thank not. you so much. Thank Shut you. Shut it I'm off. Here, I'm here. I'm here. All right. All right. Edit that out. <laughs> Edward. It'll be funny when it's in. Mm. Watch. So, we started school this week. We did. How has that been going? It's going. Wait, real quick, real quick. I do want to recap. It's not that like I'm MIA and not helping out. I've just been working, yeah. like on site. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been, so we started school. It's a new version of school for us. I mean, as it's been, I think it's a new version of school for everyone right now, but like, ex, an, what's the word? Not extraordinary. A, especially <laughs> having a really rough night, guys. I'm extremely tired. Um, it's especially different for us because we're not just doing distance learning, um, from our normal brick and mortar school, we've switched over to homeschooling, like um, straight up <clears throat> homeschooling and a different version of homeschooling than the typical homeschool. So we're doing a virtual homeschool. Um, so it's like a hybrid model of homeschool, um, but not like your typical brick and mortar virtual distance learning. It's I'm pretty involved, more involved than I thought I would be. In the right. education process, I'm hoping it eases up a little. So the, what's the average day so far? So far? Yeah. Long. Um, so the kids start out about seven thirty, eight o'clock and they have to like log in to their, I mean, they've only done a couple days, so right. it's, it's been a little bit of a Do they have like s- certain times that they absolutely have to be at, like in a yeah. class? Yeah. So they have to be in a classroom at a specific time and then they have to, only certain times they have like set, like our middle schooler has more more of, of those classrooms of yeah because they just like in middle school you move from like science to social studies to math you right. see different teachers so those are set on her calendar they have like a set calendar mm-hmm. and so like tuesdays and thursdays at 10 she sees science and you know so that's set up and they have like hour-long virtual classrooms and then she has assignments set in there which I thought would be kind of just like refreshers. And then she would do like a quiz afterwards or check um, of the stuff they learned in the virtual class. But these are even, they're just more additional learning. So she has to take a lot of notes and she's, and I think some is her just figuring out a system for herself. So it's taking a lot longer. She definitely looked a little overwhelmed. She's a little overwhelmed. So I think what what normally would probably be like an hour long assignment is taking her like four hours right now because she's, I think in defense of the school, she loves systems and organization and she tends to overdo that. Yeah. So she's taking notes like with colored pens and rewriting her notes and organizing them bulleted. And then she's got a whiteboard where she's color coding that. And then she redid that like three times the first day. So that's adding a lot of extra time, which I had. I had an idea that that would happen because that's her mindset. She has some executive functioning skills. Right. Having a list. Yeah. And so she. It's like one is you either we either have all of all or nothing. Right. So there has zero 
organization skills or she overdoes it. And so I'm giving her some time to kind of figure out what's going to work for her. And I'm hoping she settles in by like the second week, the end of the second week. Um, it's a little tough because they're only doing like three days the first week and then they do no, four they days the next week because the holiday. And then after that, I think she'll start to kind of get into a groove. Yeah. Our youngest is having a little easier time. His distance yeah, learning. I would imagine he likes the computer. He likes and he's being learning. In that well, yeah, he learns well in that setting. And the distance learning he had at the end of the school semester last year through his brick and mortar was very similar, right, to what he's doing now with this school, um, with the exception of just the larger workload. Yeah. So he, he, I think he'll do fine. Um, both of them need a lot of my assistance right now, but from what I understand from this school, I'm sorry, that will ease up, you know, by next week. Oh, cool. Once they figure out how they how to use everything, a little right, better, right, right, which is necessary because I work full time from home right now, so I can't stop every 20 minutes and go run up there and help them with an assignment. They need to be able to kind of work independently at some point soon. Right. So this is a huge change, you know, to our household. Yeah. Um, from when we talk about the old or the traditional. Drop your kids off of school. Yeah, that we had working for us. Um, I think that was, we I mean, took I'm, that for granted. I'm <laughs> dying to know what distance learning with brick and mortar schools looks like because that must be, a, I mean, I'm sure that's going to be a struggle for parents as well. These children, I'm sure, are going to need some guidance from somebody, especially the younger kids, right Right there at home. So I'm curious to see how that works for brick and mortar. And I mean, I made a commitment in this school to say, yes, I will be available. Right. They call it a learning <clears throat> coach. I'll be available as a learning coach for both my students and both my kids. So I'm not a teacher. I'm not teaching them, but I am assisting them with any needs that they have. With the brick and mortar, you're not signing up for that. Right. You know, you're not really you're paying your taxes hand on, for a teacher to, involved and stuff and the occasional homework assignments. For a reason. I mean, you you pay your taxes and your kids go to school and you have a teacher and you work. I mean, a lot of people I'm work, I'm lucky enough that I work from home right now. That is I'm sure not the case for most parents or a lot of parents right. and I'm not sure what people are doing. I can't imagine this has got to be a very difficult time. I have no judgment on whatever choice people are making, whether the hybrid model of people sending their kid child to school yeah, um, or not. I mean, we made a decision. We, we made, we made this choice not based on what we believe is right or wrong for the whole. We just made it based on what was right for our children's learning style. Our specific. Mm -hmm. We just didn't feel that what our school system had to offer was the right learning style for our children. Just um, at this time. And I, mean, I was available to do this, right. which if I wasn't, we might have had to make a different choice. Well, I think that's huge is that we just have that ability. You know, we're very fortunate. Yes. In that. That we in have that an sense. option. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't have any judgment on anyone that makes a different choice or has, I mean, I just think we're in an impossible time where school systems are, it's impossible for them to make the right decision. Yeah. It's impossible for parents to make the right decision. It's going to be impossible for students to learn. Hopefully they learn well, but I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. So we talked about, you know, um, things are going to like balance out in those Hopefully. next couple of weeks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, building routines, uh, yeah. you know, what, what have we started? Um, what are you going to inform me of? <laughs> <laughs> so for both kids, we, it's different. Team, have to do? I mean, they both have their own specific needs. Um, I think every kid has, you know, their own specific needs and learning styles. Our kids have some specific ones. Um, so we've set some, some, things in place and, and there will be some things in place going forward for our youngest. Um, he has trouble sitting still and focusing yep. as most eight year olds do. And he has some extra ones as far as <laughs> keeping his body still. Um, so sitting in a, in front of a computer and learning for multiple hours at a time can be very daunting for him. So we got him a wiggle chair to sit in, which was graciously donated to us from a friend yes yeah, because so. they're not cheap and then was that she was a previous guest, she was a guest yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got a wiggle chair donated to us and then um and that's been huge it's funny i can hear it 
on the floor when I'm like downstairs working. I can just all I hear it. It sounds like he's falling uh-huh. off a chair, but he's really just wiggling in it. And um, but that does work well. It's just that rocking that that subtle, right? Because right? <laughs> if you can imagine, it's it, plastic it's, on wood it, all day yeah. long. But the, the chair itself has like this uh, con. Would that be concave or? Convex. Convex. Uh, convex bottom. So that way it's it's kind of like a Mr. Wobble. Yay me for knowing where, that that was convex. Yeah, high five. High five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Science is not your best. So um, and that that thing <laughs> is uh, pretty awesome. And it's got like little grooves, little notches for his feet and like heels to fit in and stuff. It's great. And it's actually balance. great PT and OT for him as well. So it kind of doubles yeah. as that because it strengthens his core, which he needs. And it, he has to balance, I mean, which is something he has trouble with. You say needs, but that kid is solid. Yeah, like. but he needs his core more than anything. And it helps his balance, which is huge for him. Um, so it's it kind of doubling his two things. And then... And and he's he is going to lose out on some PT and OT just by not being in a brick and mortar school. Even though I will say that this homeschool virtual school is public, and they are offering him his IEP services as well. So we're very, again very fortunate there. But they're going to be modified a little bit because you know he's not going to see an OT or a PT at this time. Yeah. Um. So. Mm. You know, I'm taking some of that on as well to make sure that he has everything he needs. Um, we also are incorporating break time. I make sure that they have a break time in between some of their lessons so that they can get up, get moving, eat yeah. something. Um, I think it's really important that they're just staring at that computer all day. Right. And I will say the school is really good about making sure that their lessons do not incorporate just sitting in front of a computer all day long. Right. Um, so some of their lessons are really creative where they have to do 150 hours minimum of exercise nice which is a lot well i actually it's I not remember a lot it's a lot one of our, minimum uh, one of our conversations was about um like all of the items yes. that were required yeah. for the year and it was just this extremely long like a great laundry list <laughs> of like oh my of anything and everything where it's your like your baking soda, your rubber bands, staples, stapler, like a grape, hammer, um, like a grape, uh, two apples, like, and it's all because there's all of these different, uh, of course you can imagine like your kids doing activities and stuff like for the year, you're going to plant a seed. You're going to do all these things. So you need all those accoutrements. Like for, oh, you just wanted to say that. Yeah, I did. Um, I learned that from you, you worked 40 year old virgin. Well. You worked that in well. Um, thank you. So uh, it, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's it was cool pretty funny. Like I was laughing, is. like all the different things. And they were like, you don't necessarily need it all. Yeah, like I don't need to buy it all today. It was like for the whole, yeah. Like a like, paper, like one go was bad. just like a paper clip. <laughs> I need a paper clip. A single paper clip. Yeah. Um, a nail. <laughs> but yes, it's, um, I like that there is the, all of these creative options for learning that are separate from just creative. staring at the computer. Um, so there's that, there's, you know, there's a lot of, and there's more than just like get exercise. It's very creative like they it's not just like oh you have to do this you have to play basketball they can be really creative on how they exercise so it's just a lot um of different things so we're incorporating those for our older child um like i said there's some executive function things going on so i'm giving her a little freedom in the beginning to come up with some systems on her own and use those systems that she feels comfortable so The way she takes notes, the whiteboard, we have a cork board. We're going to have a household whiteboard as well that tells them what time they get breaks. She really thrives on knowing what's coming in a clear schedule. So if we say at 10 o'clock, this is happening at nine o'clock, this is happening at noon. You have this. She thrives on that. If it's unknown and it's like we're going to get to that at some point, it makes her very anxious. And so we're going to be making it as clear as possible um, with clear expectations that there may be changes. Uh, Another thing that we are incorporating here because they are home and we want to make sure that they understand that there's responsibilities here, just like there's responsibilities at school, responsibilities at school. You have to clean up the room. You have to make sure you are doing specific things to help that teacher. You can't just like drop your bag wherever you feel like it. You can't just leave your stuff around. Um, So we have been very lax this summer. Yeah, so let's, we're going to talk about chores, right? <laughs> we're going to talk about, we're giving them chores. These kids are going to get duties. Lax. They're going to have responsibilities in this. <laughs> we're very lax this summer when it came to 
responsibilities because I was working full time from home. It was new. I didn't really have time to even think straight when COVID hit. I just went straight to working full time and throwing them in front of the video games or whatever. So my bad there. Um, We that also just stressed me out when I came up at five o'clock and done from work and the house looked like a bomb went off and there was like food wrappers everywhere and just a mess and toys and so they need they're going to be held responsible for at least cleaning up after themselves and doing one chore a day which i don't think is asking too much no it's not um and so that will be on that whiteboard and it'll be clear directions and expectations and then they'll have break time to use their devices and things that they need because i do think that's important um that they get that freedom to chill out just like we do you know we take a minute to look at our phones and social media or whatever we want to do they should be able to take a minute to chat with a friend or play roblox or do whatever they feel is right so that's what we're looking at doing um the only outliner is what it's going to look like with me working from home full time which is new for me and you not being in the home and the kids being in school so that's kind of a new thing for us right so i'm interested in seeing how that would work because i'm not someone who's used to being a stay at home mom i enjoy working outside the home i enjoy working full time right um i really really it's nice. It's, it's good it's for my good. mental health to be able to get out and and work. And I like the fact I like me when I am that person. I like being a, you know, a working mom. It's part of my identity, but I'm a working mom now, but really I'm not. So right. it's strange. Um, it's a little overwhelming and tiring. You're still, what do you mean? You're, you're still a working mom. I mean, I'm still a working mom, but I'm not because I'm here. Yeah, I'm not outside the home. Forced to stay at home mom. I'm a stay at home <laughs> mom and working full time. So I'm balancing both at the exact same time. So it is a little stressful. I mean, I'm not just like working where I'm typing all day long. Like I'm, I, I'm in a meeting here and there and I'm answering the phone all day long. And so I can't really just like be interrupted. So it's a strange dynamic that we're going to have to figure out. So you'll get it. Yeah. So that's what things are looking like for us. I'm curious to hear what things are looking like for our listeners. School is starting around the country. In most places, it's already started. School is starting around the globe. I know. uh, We do have listeners all around the world. Yeah, by the way, thank you, everyone. (laughs) I just want to say for a second, take a moment and thank everybody that listens. We are really surprised we kind of just thought that only like our friends and family would listen to this. And we are super shocked and amazed that we have listeners like all across the world, not just like in a couple countries in countries that, I mean, some countries I've never even heard of. Yeah. So if you're a robot, thanks to, no, I don't think there's robots listening to us. We're not that special, but there is so many countries that are listening to us and I don't think they're robots because they're listening to multiple episodes. And so we've got some binge listeners in other countries. So just thank you to all of you. Please, if you are a listener that is not in the New England area and someone who's a friend or family member, please reach out to us on social media and do a shout out. Let us know where you're from and that you've been listening. And if you like the show, because we'd love to interact with you. I think it's really, really cool that we have so many. Yeah different people listening to us and so that we're bringing these you, resources. So gracias. thank you for listening. Shia, shia. Uh, I, Careful how many languages you get into. You start pronouncing things wrong and, isn't there, uh, and insulting French, everybody. You. Oh, you don't know. Cause you're no. just gracias everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we're just, we're such we're just, we're just horrible people. Okay. Um, so, Oh, moving I on. did. I did want to ask you. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Um, how was uh, your your little appearance there? Oh, I was on another podcast. I was a guest on a podcast, which is we flip, we kind of flip the table, flip, turn the table, flip mm, the. Do tell. What is it? Flip the. Turn the table. Turn the table. Flip the tie. I don't know what. Well, you guys, I don't know what it is. So we turn the tie I a little bit. My how the tables have turned. That's I was I on. I was a guest on another episode on another podcast um, called "The Well: A Mother's Journey," and really excited that I was able to do that. We had Tayana Diggs on our, on our podcast uh, a few episodes back 
And she was kind enough to ask if I would be a guest on hers. And I was really happy to. Um, I was able to speak about our birth journey with both of our children um, and just how different it was for both kids, how difficult it was to let go because your birth plan doesn't always go the way that you plan. Um, what postpartum looked like for me, um, the difficulties that I had, the positives that came out of it for me. Um, just all of that was really, really happy. Um, I hope it went well. What did you think you listened to? Oh, it was great. Well, no, I thought what was really cool is that we listened to it in the car with the kids. We did, (laughs) um, which was awesome, but it, it, it was a really, really good episode. Um, just shows how full of yeah. myself I am. I, I'm, I just, honestly, I'm just jealous, uh, you know, that she got to be on that episode. <clears throat> Why are you jealous? Yeah. You just uh, want it to be about you? No, she was just a great guest. She was. She's awesome. Oh. I feel like we're, like, best friends forever now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was so, great. To so our guests, you can definitely be a reoccurring guest if you Go want. check out that as well. I mean, not that we don't want you and love you listening to us, but it's a great podcast and... She deserves the love. Um, It's a fantastic podcast for a parent or a mother. It's amazing if you're a new mom. Um, She speaks so lovely. And I mean, honestly, some of her episodes, I'm like, I could listen to this and just fall asleep to her voice. It's so calming. And it's like having a therapist in your ear. It's amazing. So listen to it, especially if you're a new mom or if you're even not a new mom, but you're struggling. It's definitely a a great listen. Um, Yeah, so So that was was this week. We had a great week. Yeah, good week. I just got to edit when I called her the wrong name. Listen, this editing is taking forever. I have to go grocery shopping. Yeah, that's why you should go to Instacart right now. <laughs> they connect you with a personal shopper in your local area to deliver groceries from your favorite stores. Instacart delivers groceries in as fast as one hour. Hey, listeners, by following the link in our show notes, you help support our show. By doing this, Instacart is offering our listeners free delivery on your first order over $35. So, to talk a little bit about last week's episode, we hope you were, had a chance to listen to it. Um, we wanted to kind of recap it a little bit. We had Todd LeMay from Terrain Hopper USA on. Todd LeMay from Todd. Oh, yeah, I feel like I it needs like a. Dun, 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 yeah. dun. Todd LeMay from Terrain Hopper USA. Yeah, you're funny. Um, it was. Terrain Hopper USA. It was. I don't know. An awesome. Let me work with it a little bit. All right, you want it now? I'm making sick ass. Do you want to do it now? No, no. You gonna come back to it? Yeah. What? Well, you gonna come back to it? Yeah. You can think about it and come back to the song if you'd like. Oh no, I'm saying like a later. Oh, okay, so, a later like, episode. It, yeah, just like in like have, three uh, weeks, you're just gonna sing it. The greatest hits. Great. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Um, we'll put that down. We'll lay that track down. Yeah, write that down. Yeah. Is it? Um. So Todd LeMay was awesome. His resource might be one of our favorites. I know it's one of mine. Yeah. Um, just because we love, we have a side by side. We love having like an all terrain vehicle that we can take everywhere and use it to get out in the wilderness, yeah. use it to be, you know, go for miles and miles. What I really want to do is like deck it out and go camping with it. Yeah. Like we go, we travel out and we do that like 150 mile loop where we camp out somewhere and just keep going. Like yeah. It would be so sick. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's and so terrain hopper yep. for those that haven't heard the episode yet, please go listen to it. Pause us right now. Go start listening to it. Come back to us later. Um, but if you yeah, did we'll listen, still we'll still be here chatting and talking to ourselves. Um, but it is an all-terrain mobility vehicle. Is that the right way to say it? It's an I'll off-roading. To to yeah, it's an off-roading that. mobility vehicle. Yep. Um, it Sounds literally right. goes everywhere. It is motorized, so it's not something that you know it, anyone can use it. Yep. The th- and it can actually go anywhere. They, you, it, can, yeah. it, it is a it can go on the beach. wheelchair, essentially. So Yes. Let's talk about that, because I think that was one of the coolest things the about it. the best 
feature on that thing. Like uh, no matter, like you can deck it out to your, to your specifications. Like there's a lot of different combinations you, that you can have um, to make this work, but every wheel has its own motor. So four wheel drive, like a true feel four wheel drive, not just like, you know, four mm -hmm. by four where it's. Well, know. I think the cool, the coolest part that I thought, like you just mentioned is this is compliant as a mobility vehicle. So there's no limits to where you can take it. Yeah. You can use it as a wheelchair if needed in yeah. certain areas. So you're not going to go to the best part I loved about it is, you know, I kept thinking, you know, we live in new England. A lot of people go to Hampton beach. You can take this thing down on the beach onto the boardwalk. If, if you can, I'm sure if you can get it into a store there, I'm sure, well, I don't know how accessible, but like if it's an accessible area, yeah. you're allowed to take this anywhere a pedestrian can go. That was like the keywords, which I love. So on a hiking trail that pedestrians are going, if you can't take an ATV, you can take this. Yeah. And you'll absolutely have by, if you go, which you will absolutely go listen to that episode if you haven't heard it already. But when we talk about going to the beach, it gives you definitely a new perspective on what that means. Oh, um, and let me tell you what we that's huge. saw firsthand. We didn't even talk about this, but what we saw firsthand this weekend, just this week, we went to the beach with Eddie we typically don't worry too much about how he's going to get around or where he's going to be able to get to or accessibility for him because he's mobile. He can, I say he's mobile. It always sounds like a phone, you know, his mobility he's is mobile. You know, he can go anywhere. <laughs> he's got unlimited data. data. And everything. Yeah, it's great. He, his mobility is good. He usually uses his wheelchair for long distances. So we weren't, we are not usually too worried, but we took him to the beach on Monday and it came off the heels of a three day bounce house for him. He oh, was yeah. very tired, very sore. And we got to the beach and looked out the parking lot and there was this, it's not a boardwalk. It's like a, I guess it's a boardwalk. Like yeah. They called wooden, it the, it's a walkway, but it's, yeah. it had to have been a, it's a boardwalk, but half a like mile a, at least maybe a mile. It had to be at no, least a half it's mile. not a mile. It's not a half mile. It was, it was probably a quarter mile, felt which because like, a quarter mile is pretty, pretty significant. It felt like a mile. Long. So, and it's just this, uh, you know, uh, about 10 foot wide wooden walkway that travels oh, over, over a marsh over the and marsh then like area down to the beach. And then once the you're beach. on the beach, you have to now get through the beach way. No. So we just looked up and thought this is going to be a nightmare. We considered taking the wheelchair, but once you're on the beach, what are you going to do with the wheelchair? We can't leave it behind at the edge of the beach. Yeah, and it's not going to go through the beach. So we left it behind. He made it. It took us a while to get to the beach, but once we got there, we were good. Yeah. Unloaded. He was exhausted by the end of the day. I ended up carrying him all the way back to the car. He weighs, he's not light, guys. And I, I'm not strong. So it was exhausted. The whole time he kept saying, you're hurting my bum. <laughs> and you're you don't know how to carry me i was like well you weigh a ton yeah. <laughs> so it's not you know it's something that's not you know they, i think accessibility is something that's not always thought about they think oh well we have a ramp yeah it was technically a ramp and you can use it to get from it's a to totally b real to share but once you get to the yeah once you get to the beach to the sand nobody is able to take a wheelchair onto the sand. So I don't know what accessibility, who this is helping. Um, but this terrain hopper will take you right onto the we'll sand. We'll solve into, that problem. Into the water. I mean, to all, it was just it amazing. It will go through the marsh. Okay. Anyways, it was fantastic. And we kept saying, well, oh, if we only, 20 inches of water. if we only had a terrain hopper, we could have made this whole trek a lot easier. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we're going to have to, I don't know how. Take out another mortgage. Well, because then it gets to the trailer hitch, and then get we could have loaded all of our stuff on there, too, and I wouldn't have had it. There you go. <laughs> so that was so, great. you know, consider the train hopper. I want to see a second asset that I think was fantastic that Todd brought up is this is not just being used by people with disabilities in the community. Anyone in the community can use this. They see people that have bad knees, people that, you know, anybody that has are just getting older anyone that just 
is now seeing themselves in a position where they're not getting around as easily. They used to love hiking and now they can't hike the same. Maybe they had knee surgery, hip surgery. You know, they have a new hip and they still want to go for a hike. This terrain hopper solves that problem. A lot of people, I think we are living in an age now. People are living longer. You've got baby boomers still getting out there exploring, you know, hiking, people are hitting retirement and they're really enjoying their retirement. This is a perfect opportunity to do that with something like this. So, you know, we're really pushing this one. I know we're talking about it a lot, but we, we really love talking to Todd. We really love the terrain hopper. And I mean, we're not getting anything out of this. We just really want to make sure everyone enjoys this resource. So we'll move on from that. Um, and just let you guys and let you guys go listen to it. We want to also let you guys know that for the next, we got some really exciting episodes coming up. Oh yeah. Um, some amazing, amazing guests. One of them. I know I keep Mm. saying this when it talks to, when we talk about people I am excited to talk to, um, this one person I met this one okay, person. This one person. I'm not even going to give it away. I'm just going to give you a. I'm just going to tell you that this one person I have had a passion. <laughs> hint, hint for talking to. Jeez, dude, you're the worst ever. And the thing is, that's a little tricky here. Is that I connected with her completely oblivious to who she was. All of those things we connected on a whole on a mommy level. Oh my god! And yeah. I love her. I love what she's got to offer as a resource. I love who she is. I love what she's doing. She's she lives kind of nearby to us, which is super exciting because I my hope is that we become best friends forever. Wipe your nose off. I know. I don't care. I love her. And Jesus. so she's a, an upcoming guest. I'm really excited for you guys to listen to what she's got to offer and her resource to the community. Um, some of you have probably even used it, which is really exciting. I know we had. Um, we've got another resource, that, uh, a resource, I guess you could say, that's coming up um, who put tears into Eddie's eyes. It was. Oh, man. So hit home right to your heart when you watch. It and you get to know this person. Uh, I can't wait to speak with them Stop, and get that dude. one out. Stop. I know. I'm not going to tell everything. because you hate surprises. You, you just ruin it for everybody else, man. I want to give people a little like no, you just sneak go, peek. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be awesome. I'm sorry. I can't trust do. us. I'm There's going to be time in between where they can fit in okay. all of this stuff. And I won't just, say anymore. Oh. We've got some really big no, surprises you just gave coming away up. All this stuff because people are no one's going to know. Really They're going to want to listen to find out. Well, you guys tell us. Do you want surprises or do you want a sneak peek? No, no, no. You tell me. I want to know. So two, you guys have homework this week. One, you have to chat with us on social media and tell us where are you from? Where are you listening from? That's number one, because we know you're all over the place. Where you at? (laughs) And number two, do you want our upcoming guests to be a surprise or do you want a sneak peek? You've got homework. I want to hear about it. Like, but when you say sneak peek, like you're saying like a couple of weeks or a few weeks in advance, like sneak peeks are cool, like a week in advance. Okay. Well, but. we'll see guys. <sighs> we'll definitely give you sneak peeks. If you got on our newsletter, that's a little plug. Get on the newsletter. If you want to hear about what's upcoming, cause I will tell you sneaky peek. That's it. Oh, for now me. we don't even have time for my, we've got time. Do you guys of, mind? Do you even know where it is? We'll do it super fast. I don't. All right. Do you want to use that? We've got an extra right No, because I'm not a fan of those. Hang on, I'll look for it. I liked mine. Hang on, let me see. Can, you can cut this dead air out. <laughs> All right. I don't know where it is. I'm sorry, I don't know where it is. Next week. Next week, we'll do it. See, that's what I said. I'm sorry. All right, I'll, I'll find a way to cut it out. Okay. Well, everybody, we really appreciate everything. All of you guys listening, interacting with us on social media, being super awesome. Yeah, thanks for listening. Sharing us with everyone. You guys have been great. We really appreciate you. Thanks for listening to us. Yeah, so virtual hug. Hugs. (laughs) Bye. Have a great night. Well, thank you so much for listening. We really hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, please make sure you share with a friend and leave a review. 
You can find all the resources mentioned in this episode on our Facebook or Instagram on at special about special. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.